بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord Cherisher and Sustainer of the Worlds the most gracious the most merciful the Master of the Day of Judgment All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon His last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His pure family, His lay companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the Day of Judgment Amin Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as With the wisdom and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he created people, he sent for them prophets and messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them and teach them. So that nobody will have an excuse in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter saying that I haven't received any message or any order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or I do not know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No excuses because the prophets and messengers have already delivered the message. Now, many prophets and messengers came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever people will forget or ignore or neglect part of the previous orders and commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a new prophet or messenger will come to revive that. The messengers will sometimes tweak some of these commandments for as suits people as humanity developed it needs more and more guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the last and final prophet and messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned he's a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was the seal of the prophets no prophet will ever come after the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Holy Quran and he said only the seals of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final of the prophets. What about the messengers? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say the final among the messengers? You know, a prophet is less than a messenger. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say he was the seal of the messengers, means probably a prophet will come. No messenger will come, but maybe a prophet will come. Because the prophet could come and revive the previous message only, not with the new message. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there will be no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, means, of course, there will be no messenger as well. If a prophet will never be sent, then let alone a messenger. So the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu was the seal. Now, there was a gap between Jesus, peace be upon him, and the messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hundreds of years. And at that time, humanity forgot most of the teachings of the pre previous uh, prophets and messengers. Only slight remnant remained here and there. But most of the, even the basic, requirement and commandment were already forgotten or tweaked or changed or altered or in the least many people have already been committing polytheism calling and praying to others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to someone else with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of that is wrong so at that time the world was full of chaos injustice crimes killing were widespread just the norm that was the norm everywhere Hatred spread among people. Unity was only to a very small groups, and that's it. The rest, all fighting factions everywhere. So you'll find at that time, there were also superstitions, ignorance, belief in magic and soothsayings and, and, and fortune tellings, etc. All unscientific, unreasonable, and logical. But still, people will believe in many of that. And at that time uh, as well, there were lots of crimes being committed against people's lives, against their property, belonging, etc. At that time of darknesses, in belief and in practice, and in morals and in ethics and behaviors, all of that, it was total darkness upon darkness. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the final prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to revive people again, bring them back to light, guide them back again. Show them the path, clarify to them the orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the last and final time. This was the final divine message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the everlasting divine message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized the message of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as mercy for the worlds with S, plural. Mercy for the worlds. He didn't say mercy for this world. He didn't say mercy for humans, for humanity, for human and the jinn. He didn't say mercy for the believers. No, it was mercy for what? For the worlds. 
So the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was mercy for the believers and the non-believers, for the human being and the jinn and other worlds that we do not know uh, of, for the animals and the plants and the environment and everything. On all aspects, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala knows how many worlds the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was a mercy. The guidance of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was summarized as mercy, SubhanAllah. And that's it. Each and every rule in Islam that the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi brought was revolving around mercy for you and for everyone else, not only every human being, even every animal and creature and everything. That was the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He himself said this also. He said, I am merely a mercy given by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to the world as a gift to this world. SubhanAllah. Now, we, we can just take some glimpses of the mercy of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His whole life was just examples of mercy upon mercy upon mercy. But we just some glimpse so that we will understand the concept of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here. One form of that is the Messenger Muhammad sallam, never cursed, never prayed against even the disbelievers, subhanAllah. Most of his life, the Messenger Muhammad sallam, will forgive them. Most. Except for the extreme die-hard criminals, the Messenger sallam, will forgive every one of them as people of ignorance. They do not know. He will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes they are hitting him, they are uh, torturing him, Blood, he's wiping the blood and he's saying, remembering the stories of previous prophets. And he says, a prophet, he was tortured in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he'll pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, forgive my people because they do not know. Oh Allah, forgive my people because they do not know. Those are the disbelievers who are torturing him. At that time, he's praying for them. For their forgiveness. Not against them. When there was too much harm against the believers in Mecca, they could not bear it anymore. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his followers. So they came to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they told him, Messenger of Allah, pray to Allah Almighty against the disbelievers, the polytheists. Pray to Allah Almighty on them to relieve us from all this torture and pain. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, I was not sent by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to curse people. As was sent, I was sent as mercy. And he refused to pray against them. He'll pray for their guidance. SubhanAllah. There are so many examples of this. And SubhanAllah, most of the Muslims nowadays in this area and around this area and many other areas in the world are the offspring of those people. If the Messenger says, I'll pray against them, none of us will be here, SubhanAllah. But he said, no, I want them and people from their offspring to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to relieve them and save them from him. So he never wanted to hurt people or kill them or fight them. He wanted to vanish injustice and criminals act all over the world that is what he wanted to revive good morals and ethics for people so he didn't intend to kill the disbelievers no he wanted to kill the wrong actions and the wrong beliefs that were there that was the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the examples are endless you come the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was also exemplary with his enemies, many areas as we have seen, with the believers themselves, even with animals. We have also spoken about uh, before about that, about goodness to animal and mercy to animal and, and uh, good uh, treatment of animal, etc. On all aspects, that concept of mercy was there. We can take a little more examples from uh, mercy of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu One example of that is how keen he was for your benefit and my benefit, for us, for his nation, for his people. Whenever he passes by an ayah in the Holy Quran about previous nations or prophets and messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will pray for this nation. One day Abdullah bin Amr bin Asr radiallahu anhuma, he narrated that the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he recited the saying of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Oh my Lord, they have the idols, they have misled and misguided many people astray. So anyone who follows me, he is part of me. And anyone who disobeys me, then you are the most forgiving, the most merciful. He's praying for his people who sinned, who didn't follow him. And the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he recited the saying of Isa Alayhi Salam, Oh Allah, if you punish them, they are your slaves. And if you forgive them, then you are the most wise, the most almighty, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he recited these two verses, he raised his hands and he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, My Lord, my Lord, my nation, my nation, oh Allah, my nation, my nation, my ummah, my ummah, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he started crying. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam, go to Muhammad and see what makes him cry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Allah Almighty already knows, but this is a message to us. To know about this side of the Messenger Muhammad that we do not know. 
So Jibreel alayhi salam came to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi saying, what make you cry? He said, my nation, my nation, pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them and have mercy upon them. That is me and you, subhanallah. So Jibreel alayhi salam went back and Allah Almighty, after he said that to Allah Almighty, and Allah Almighty knows best, Allah Almighty told him, go to Muhammad and tell him, we will please you in your nation and we will never displease you, subhanallah, sallallahu alayhi salam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Duha, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And your Lord will give you and give you and give you till you are pleased. Till you are pleased. So see how keen he was for our salvation, our forgiveness. SubhanAllah, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Moreover, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray for you and me, for his nation, for his followers. In every salah, each and every salah that he prayed. He will pray for our forgiveness, subhanAllah. You believe that? Aisha radiallahu anha, the beloved wife of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she narrated, I was with the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I, uh, it was a very cheerful uh, moment. So I told the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh Messenger of Allah, pray for me. Specific prayer, something, something special, just a prayer for me. So the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed for her and said, Oh Allah, forgive for Aisha her sins, whatever in the past, and whatever might come, in the future and whatever hidden and whatever apparent total forgiveness beautiful dua of the messenger muhammad sallallahu so she was pleased and when he noticed her happy and her pleased she said, are you pleased with the with this dua she said yes why why shouldn't i be pleased with this dua the dua from a messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the best creator of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with total forgiveness and comprehensive forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, by Allah, this is my dua for my people in every salah. Ya Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa He'll pray for our total forgiveness in every salah that he prayed. That was the mercy of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The mercy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in every aspect of our life. Whatever goodness in this world or in the hereafter that will come to us, it's because of the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All the good morals, the good aspects, the good behaviors that you have, it was revived by the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All aspects of goodness and good treatment, peaceful coexistence, rights of people, rights of animals, rights, all of that was established by the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you can't imagine that concept of mercy. Now, uh, time is short, so we have to conclude just with uh, one concept, is the right of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon us. There are so many rights of his. The first and foremost is to pray for uh, send peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered us. You are saying it in obedience to the orders of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He says, Inna Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Verily Allah Almighty and His angels sent peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O ye who believe, sent peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam much. Now, Keep in mind that the Messenger of Allah does not need me and you saying greetings to him and peace and blessings upon him. No, he does not need any of that. Allah Almighty already descended upon him with mercy and peace and blessings. He does not need The angels are sending that all the time. So he does not need any of that, right? So why all this guidance? Why encouraging us to do that? This is for you and for me. Because we need it. Because... It is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because whenever you send peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa one time, Allah Almighty will send peace and blessings upon you ten times. So it's for you. So if you are not doing that, or if you are doing it late, you are actually being stingy against yourself. You are not being generous to yourself. You are preventing yourself from much blessings and peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a loser, really. The person who does not send much peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whenever you have free time, or whenever you remember the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, send peace and blessings upon him to get the reward yourself. In fact, even when you send peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you didn't send directly. No, you pray to Allah Almighty to send peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You do not say, my salah upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No. See how much? He does not need any of mine, any of yours, any of us. None. So that is the guidance. That is the very most important thing that sadly many people are not doing nowadays. The second point is to revive the sunnah of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And to implement it in your life because he is the role model for any of us. Do not follow what you like. 
follow the guidance of the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even if you, it is not what you like, what your wife like, what your family, what your friends, etc. No, follow what is right, not what they like. So that is another of the rights of the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Moreover, loving the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is one of his rights. Above any, any and everyone in your life as free of the humans. Loving the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a priority because he is your gate to the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is your gate to salvation. He is your gate to the best. He is your guidance. He is your teacher. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala taught us this in the Holy Quran. Says, Say, O oh Muhammad, if you love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then follow me and Allah will love you and have mercy upon you. Forgive your sins. Verily, Allah Almighty is very forgiving, very merciful. So the concept is, that is the way. There is no other way. You want the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You want God to love you? No other way. Who says that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Holy Quran. Nobody. So see, that is another of the rights of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Also, you have to teach your family and your kids about these and the ideas and the glimpse and the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And the beauty of the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The mercy in the guidance of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because sadly, many wrong information are being widespread nowadays. People are quoting ayahs or verses or saying the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of context and putting it there. Verses of war are being applied in peace. That is wrong. So many misconceptions, misunderstandings. So it's our duty to revive that. Our duty to live the life of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and guide to the true path of moderation and balance and peace and mercy of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As Allah Almighty says, verily we have sent you only as mercy for the world. That is the concept of mercy. We have to revive it in our world. May Allah Almighty grant us the blessings of following the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the love of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the following of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our beliefs, in our actions, in our sayings and inside and outside and all types of, uh, of things that happens in our life. May Allah Almighty bless us with the company of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hereafter and may Allah Almighty bless us with drinking from the hand of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his basin, the kawthar, inshallah, in the hereafter after all of us and may Allah Almighty grant us a place with the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the highest place in the highest for those in heaven inshallah ameen Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima al-kathira